Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the relationships of our state variables before and after a shock. Specifically, we're going to be looking at density, velocity, pressure, temperature, and entropy. Our starting points are again going to be the mass and momentum equations. But now we have some new tools. So the other tools we're going to be using are this definition of A star squared, the critical speed of sound, which we found was equal to U1 times U2. Additionally, we're going to be using our equation for M star squared, and this was equal to gamma plus 1 times the current Mach number squared divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 times the current Mach number squared. And lastly, we're also going to be using the ideal gas equation. So P is equal to rho times R times T. So let's start off with finding the relationship for rho. What we're trying to get is rho 2 divided by rho 1. And this is from the mass equation, just equal to u1 divided by u2. So to work on this a little bit more, I'm just going to multiply by u1 over u1. And this gets us to u1 squared divided by u1 u2. But u1 u2 is exactly equal to a star squared. So this is just u1 squared divided by a star squared. Well, u1 divided by a star is exactly the definition of the critical Mach number. So this is m1 star squared. And we said that we had an equation for m star squared. So what we found here is a relationship of the densities before and after the shock based solely on the Mach number in front of the shock. So this is the sort of thing that we're going to try and find for each of these variables. Now, once we have rho 2 over rho 1, we implicitly have u2 over u1. It's just the inverse of this. So let's go ahead and move on and find pressure. So in order to get pressure, we need to use the momentum equation. I'm going to start off by isolating pressure on the left-hand side. And I'm going to get P2 minus P1. And this is going to be equal to the rest of the equation on the left-hand side. Now, we're looking for the pressure ratio. So in order to get that, we need to divide P2 by P1, which means that we need to divide the right-hand side of the equation by P1 as well. So now, let's try and simplify this a little bit. I'm going to separate out the terms. I'm going to write rho 1 u1 over p1. This is going to be multiplied by u1. And then I'm going to subtract off the second term, which is rho 2 u2, again divided by p1. And that's multiplied by u2. So the trick we use here is, again, just plugging in the mass equation. So rho 2 u2 is equal to rho 1 u1. So I can actually write all of this as rho 1 u1 divided by p1, and that's going to be multiplied by u1 minus u2. And then I'm going to use the trick that we used last time, which was multiplying this by gamma over gamma and finding the speed of sound squared. So let's see what this looks like. We have p2 over p1 minus 1, which we get just by evaluating this division, is going to be equal to gamma u1 divided by the speed of sound squared. And all of that is going to be multiplied by u1 minus u2. So now we're getting close to finding the Mach number in here. u1 divided by a1 would be exactly our Mach number. Uh, but we need an additional u1. So we're going to get that from this inside the parentheses, which means that we end up with gamma u1 squared over a1 squared, all that multiplied by 1 minus u2 divided by u1. So now we're getting very close to having a relationship based solely on the Mach number. So this is going to be p2 over p1 is equal to this one we can move to the right hand side. That's going to be plus gamma times m1 squared. And this is going to be multiplied by 1 minus this ratio. We just said that this ratio was the inverse of the rho 2 over rho 1 ratio. So this can be written as 2 plus gamma minus 1 
m1 squared all over gamma plus 1 m1 squared. Okay, now we want to simplify this relationship. So I'm going to rewrite that, except I'm going to write this one here as gamma plus 1 times m1 squared over the same. So we end up with gamma plus 1 times m1 squared minus 2 minus gamma minus 1 times m1 squared all over gamma plus 1 times m1 squared. So now simplifying this, we can get rid of these m1s and we can move this gamma plus 1 out. And then finally, we can add this term with this term. And these two together are just going to be 2 times m1 squared, since the gammas are going to cancel out. Once we do that, we can actually move the 2s out as well. So let's go ahead and try and write all this together. So the 1 stays alone, and we said that we're going to have a gamma over gamma plus 1. That's going to be multiplied by this 2m1 squared minus 2. So then we can take the 2 out and end up just with m1 squared minus 1. So this is about as simple as we can get it. So we have a pressure ratio between the two states before and after the shock based solely on the Mach number before the shock. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, the last thing we want to do is to find the temperature and entropy. So to find the temperature, we're going to use the ideal gas law. So I can write this at state two and then divide by the same equation for state one. The R's are gonna cancel out. And what this tells me is that I have a relationship of T2 over T1, which is based on the relationships between my pressures and my densities. So T2 over T1 is simply equal to the pressure ratio multiplied by the inverse of the density ratio. So at this point, we can write T2 over T1 without any trouble. This is just equal to what we just wrote, and then that's multiplied by the inverse of rho 2 over rho 1. And it might be possible to simplify that further, but we have a relationship between the temperatures. Now, the last thing that we want to do is go ahead and find S2 minus S1. We can't actually find a ratio here. So all we're going to do is plug in this exact definition from thermodynamics. So this is equal to Cp times the natural log T2 over T1 minus R times the natural log of P2 over P1. And that's all we need to do to find entropy. So we can plug things in here, but in reality, we'd be finding the ratios first and then plugging those values in. So between the previous lesson and this one, we've gone from mass, momentum, and energy equations and some definitions from thermodynamics and arrived at relationships for all of the state variables before and after the shock based purely on the Mach number. Now in practice, you would typically have a table of these values since actually calculating them can be tedious. But if you were to plug these into a computer program or something like this, uh, these are exactly the equations that you would use.